So I'm John Jester. I manage the enterprise business for Microsoft in the UK. And the next session we have is a customer panel. So we just got to see a fantastic demo, Xbox, the phone, the PC all working together. Now you're going to hear from some of our customers who are actually making this work <coughs> in their business and, and driving real impact. So I'd like to invite the panel up. Come on up on stage. We have Peter Scott. He's the CIO of British Telecom. We have uh, Ian Bell, Cambridgeshire, CIO. We have Paul Russell from RICO. We have Jason Betteridge. Uh, he's the MD of one of our partners building apps on the phone with Rigian. And then Darren Folds from Barclays, who leads the mobility and ping it application. So, gentlemen, thanks for coming up. And uh, I guess I'm going to start off with a little bit of a curveball we got from John's presentation talking about bring your own devices. So I think two or three years ago, I know when I was doing my planning, I think when all of you were doing your planning, we thought, you know, half, two thirds or all customers would have moved to a bring your own device model. <coughs> and we've seen the data that shows about a third of customers have actually moved to bring your own device. So I'd actually like to go across the panel, hear from you. What's going on in your respective companies? Are you doing bring your own device? Are you still doing uh, <coughs> corporate deployed devices? And maybe your insight as to why that curve is slower than we anticipated over the past few years. So Peter, I'll start with you. Yeah, OK. So, um, so we do both. Um, we do BYOD and we do our own corporate devices. Um, BYOD, we tend to do in the smartphone and tablet space. So we don't do it in the laptop space or the desktop space or anything like that. Um, we've got about 12,000 people who've chosen to do that, so it's quite a lot, but it's like, you know, maybe 10, 15% of the company. Um, and I'd say it's a choice. So some people choose to do it, some people choose not to. Um, it tends to always be a supplementary device, so it's not the primary device, it tends to be supplementary. Okay, that's interesting. So supplementary, bring your own, your core device is going to be provided by IT. Yeah, absolutely. So Ian, what are you doing? <clears throat> core devices for us are provided by IT. I think you know our space is a little bit different to probably most of these guys. Maybe not Barclays, but from a from a, a laws and guidance and advice principles yeah. in a local government space, bring your own is is still somewhat of the devil. Um, we're seen as one of those who try to push some boundaries, and we've been there and we've touched on it with three, four hundred users before, just with sandboxed apps, email, calendar, and various bits, and we're now. We've taken that facility away. We're now beginning to look at use cases, but it's still, it's still a, a tough place for us to go. Clearly, more and more um, in that MDM space, some of those options with phone are becoming more viable for us to look at, but you know, still um, bring your own is, is still a, a lesser option for us currently. Okay, and it's interesting. We were talking at breakfast. <coughs> You know, obviously your, your core employees, that's going to be pretty strict, pretty regulated. But you have a lot of volunteers who come sure. in, right? And they're not necessarily employees, but they may need access to information, data as part of, you know, how they serve the communities. Hey, can you talk a little yeah, bit about I can. that? Um, there are some guys who are absolutely out there standing up saying, you know, give me, give me, I want corporate solutions on our devices. There are people out there who've clearly been out, chosen their device, paid for it, and have some reluctance around that point. And, our, point, our points for us are an encouragement of beginning to get them to understand the, the security perspective from us, importantly, that we can have that separation between corporate and, and personal devices in that world. And, and we'll begin to push on that, but the, the mobile journey for us is, is still pushing hard and we need to get that into our business first and get that culture beginning to change and then we'll have a look at the volunteer points as well. Okay, so some good insights. Paul, Rico, what's the status there? Yeah, very, very similar to these, these gentlemen in terms of corporate device being our our standard, we made a move from, from a black room infrastructure recently. We went to Nokia and Windows 8 and now soon to be in Windows 8.1. And that was very much around four, four core principles <coughs> for us that are driving um, our strategy, which is how do we manage these devices? How are they available? How do they perform and how are they secure? So that, that is a sort of journey we're going on in terms of how do we manage mobile devices. The key driver for us is actually not about the device, but it's about the persona of the user. So you know, for an organization of our size, a lot of people move around our buildings a lot. Um, and our clients move around buildings as well and use our products. So the persona of how people move around is really interesting to us. We think that will then drive what we do around ultimately whether people bring their own or they use a corporate device. Yeah, okay, it's a good insight there. And uh, Darren, Barclays, what's the status of bring your own device there? Obviously a highly regulated industry. Absolutely. Um, we have to say we do pretty much the same. Um, 
bring your own device for us. We've got about 80,000 unique devices, 30,000 people, 65% um, in the UK. So it's, it is taking off in, in Barclays and it's a core part of our strategy. Um, it is around customer choice at the moment. Um, what we find actually <coughs> that a lot of customers um, and, and colleagues actually really like um, the ability to use the secure um, access to their email, the calendars and so forth, along with the social media. And we've got a massive push on digital uh, within Barclays. Um, and so actually kind of <laughs> enabling them to choose which device they want to use and actually enable that through one device is kind of core to that strategy. Okay, interesting. And Jason, given you're at a partner, you work with a lot of different enterprise <laughs> customers, do you have kind of a view of what you're seeing, maybe how yeah, it compares to Yeah, I think what, what, what we find is, is when, um, when customers come to us to build uh, an application for a mobile device, it's usually for a specific line of business uh, need. So what tends to happen is, is a customer wants to, to choose one platform and not have to build that application many times on different platforms. What we're definitely finding is the, the ability to build on 8.1 and deploy to mobile and, and device and desktop in one kind of, in one go is becoming more and more attractive. A lot of com customers that also engage with us are also heavily Microsoft invested and like the fact they've got one single platform, integrated platform across, across the board. So. We don't okay. find it too much in that. In, in yeah, that world. good. It's a good insight. So, John, this very much matches your survey data and some of the information you've put together. And it was interesting. Some of the themes came across. I, we didn't double check this in advance, so <laughs> good thing it worked out. But uh, I think also when you think about the consumer side and the enterprise side and how those things come together, the way Dave spoke about it this morning, you see that's actually impacting BYOD and impacting some of these other decisions. So, yeah, thank you for that insight. So. Um, Peter, thinking about uh, BT and, and how you're leveraging mobility to drive your strategy, one of the things that's been really interesting working with you and your team is you're using Windows Phone and you're also using Windows 8 in certain scenarios. Could you talk a little bit about you know, the convergence there? How does that support your business, uh, that ecosystem? And you know, everyone got to see a little bit of a demo of that from Brett earlier with the phone, the tablet, the PC connecting. I don't believe we've got the Xbox in at BT, but maybe maybe that's a new opportunity for us going forward. Okay. Yeah. So um, so so I think broadly, you know, everybody's used to their laptops. They're used to their PCs, um, and they're used to working with Office. They're used to working with uh, products like SharePoint and Link uh, and those sorts of technologies. Um, so being able to give them, you know, put into their hands a device that seamlessly operates with all that, that you know, <coughs> seamlessly opens Excel documents, allows you to edit them, seamlessly opens PowerPoint presentations and actually renders them correctly, rather than some other rendering you know, that we're, we're all used to if you've, you know, if you've used a lot of the other uh, types of devices about. That goes down really, really well. Um, and, and I think touching on you know, what was said earlier about you know, a lot of the power of this stuff comes when you actually start to put apps on these devices, right? The device is sort of a hygiene point. You need something that works, it's fast, it gets connected, we can secure it in IT. But, you know, the, the business benefit starts to come with the apps that you put on there. Um, and one of the things we really like about uh, Windows Phone and Windows PC is that we can now start to develop these universal apps where we develop the app once and it can run on both platforms, right? Um, otherwise, it starts to get really expensive for us to start developing for every single different platform um, a separate application. So, yeah, that, that stuff's working out well for us. No, that's good. That's good insight. And, uh, you, you know, Chris had spoke about being at Nokia and then coming into Microsoft uh, about six weeks ago and saying, hey, he almost feels like he's 20% more productive. And, and we see that similar feedback from customers as we work closely with them and bring the cloud and we bring mobility together. You start to get those high productivity scenarios where you've got access to your information wherever you are. Uh, be it on a phone, be it on a tablet or a PC. And that's, that's an exciting scenario that's starting to happen. Um, Ian, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, Cambridge Fair and what you're doing with Windows Phone? So the, the, you know, the, the combined platform is the, is the power again, and you know, the universal apps piece we're, we're working with. Um, Black, Mar Black Marble is one of our key partners around delivering um, new touch-friendly applications where our, where our frontline cops can start to get the power of the, the rich information that we hold as an organization and how that become more efficient and interactive with them where they are so that the whole lots and lots of work going on around um, around geo and the security that ties into that so they can get a real influence from the whole of the information base that sits around them at, at, at the touch of a button you know we're working and we're working hard with them to begin to understand 
not only about their role, but the devices that fit their role, importantly. You know, these devices have to work at 3 a.m. in the pouring rain. They have to work at noon in, in, in bright sunshine. And with Windows Phone, we've finally found a platform where we can begin to execute some of that, begin to meet their needs, and actually, for them, and start to bring them into the 21st century and give them the device that looks pretty decent, pretty new and up-to-date, and, and not just a device that gets thrown in a bag and, and, and is looked at on occasion. And uh, that's good. That's good insight. And I think what keeps coming up over and over is when we think about what the mobility strategy is for an enterprise, it's not just about the device. It's not just about the phone. It's, it's what you just talked about. You've got big data, tremendous mm -hmm. amount Absolutely. of information, uh, making that <clears throat> accessible to your team on a device anywhere they are. I mean, it's productivity. I mean, it's safety and, and other even more important things in your business. Yeah. yeah, the safety one is key. So that that whole piece about what's going on around them and importantly who's around them to support them at the same point as well. So, yeah. you know, yeah. So just a cluster of information. It really comes together. If you've got to bring that whole platform together, the big data, the right applications, and then the anywhere access to that information. So, Paul at Rico. I know you've uh, you've had a big deployment around Windows Phone, uh, about eight thousand devices. I'd like you to kind of share with the audience how's that experience been for you, as leading IT from a security manageability standpoint, and then of course I think it's always fascinating what's the employee reaction been, right? Okay. Uh, as you specified these devices and provided them. Okay, so for, for Rico the decision was was really tied on how do we exploit what we already have? So we had a big our license arrangement with Microsoft, how do we exploit what we've already spent our money on? Because that's, that's always the challenge, is how do you get most from what you've already spent? So it was, that was a real driver for us to actually go to any other, other direction, let's just take advantage of that situation. Um, but also tied into the fact that we're, we're a productivity company. You know, we've, been, we've been doing this for decades um, through what our devices do, and actually empowering our workers to be more productive during their day would actually then drive their productivity with our clients. So actually it was a great marriage and a great alignment both in terms of empowering our staff to work with our customers around how a device makes people more productive. And the Microsoft Windows Phone stack and all the elements that that brings allows us to take our journey from effectively being an analog company many, many moons ago where paper was paper, uh, moving that into digital content and actually then using the plethora of devices that Microsoft give to actually consume that content in a very secure way that supports the way people move around businesses. So that sort of value proposition story for us allows us to do the freedom to operate and gives our staff that confidence that they've actually got a, a platform that allows them to be more productive. And the idea of just making your day a little bit easier, even if it's a few minutes, because you can pick up print in another smarter way, this is really making a difference. Nothing grand, nothing too dramatic, just something that makes people have a better 60 minutes experience every day. Yeah, no, I think it's a great, great example. It's just as simple experiences, they add up. You know, totally. the cumulative effect is significant. And Jason, I know you've worked with Rico on building an application to support some of those uh, scenarios we just spoke about. Can you talk a little bit yeah. about the app you built? And then so we built uh, an application called Request Hub, which uh, basically enables you to request existing business intelligence dashboards and reports existing assets, as it were, uh, that sit within SQL Server, and also documents that sit within SharePoint, and request them directly to the hand, either from a direct download or via email. <clears throat> what we've found from working with, with Rico and, and many other customers is, although we do talk about 4G and always being on and cloud and all those good things, is it's often the times when you've not got a reliable signal that you actually need just to get to, to that answer really quick and you know and get to that accurate information. So we have an ability to be able to to, to request via email you know, uh, at a dashboard that goes to line of business applications that we've taken from around Rico's business, pulled that into a cloud offering and into a SQL server, render up a real-time dashboard and, and email it back to the phone when you've got a data connection. Um, that's basically enabling the people out, out in the field to get insights such as project performance, um, resource allocation, utilisation, even just something simple as what holidays have people got available to them. What documents have we got that we're storing against this particular project that's relevant to me? If I'm maybe with a customer and I want to look at a, an SLA or a contract, I can request that via the, the, the phone, either straight to the phone securely or via Exchange or Office 365. Now, good, good example of an app. And, 
And uh, while I've got you on the hot seat, uh, I'll take advantage of it to ask you, you know, why did you choose Microsoft to develop on? You know, there's iOS, there's Android, there's other platforms. Give us a little bit of insight. Yeah, I, I mean, the Microsoft technology platform is our chosen, uh, chosen platform across the board from a perspective of being an information management company. Uh, but equally, now it, the, 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 the ability to build once and deploy multiple applications on different platforms is, you know, is a, um, a, a real advantage that we see. And, and also, when it comes to integration, for us, m mobile applications are about how well integrated they are with other business systems. Otherwise, for us, they're just another device to consume uh, email and social. So, for, uh, for, to play into our skill sets and to play into the, to the investments our, uh, our customers have made, that's why we, we, we chose Microsoft as, a, as an end-to-end -end platform, from, from cloud to SQL to SharePoint to mobile across the board. Good. No, it's good to hear, and it's that I think that platform story in the it's ecosystem, the yeah, coming into play again. So, Darren, you you're looking at this from a little bit different perspective, right? As you're running a business, it's less about the IT side and more about building the right apps to connect with your your customers ultimately. And Chris had mentioned earlier about the Barclays uh, application being one of the highest rated apps in the Windows Marketplace. I, I'd like to get your feedback on that application, how it's helping you connect with your customers, and, and also, you know, to toot your own horn a little bit with respect to why do you think that is so highly rated? Sure. Um, so I think um, Barclays started its digital journey uh, approximately about two and a half years ago, uh, building out mobile banking and also our, our Ping It, our mobile payments uh, application. And, I mean, on a simple level, um, the reason we developed on Windows alongside the other platforms is our customers were asking for it. Um, yeah, in, and Chris alluded to this uh, in terms of the growth, in terms of the connected consumer and, and the converse, uh, conversations we had earlier. Um, we found, you know, over a, it took us 10 years to build 4 million digital active customers online. It's taken us 15 months to get 3 million on mobile. And the level of engagement we're driving in, in those channels, kind of um, 28 times a month on average, someone will engage for us on mobile. Um, online, it's about six times a month. So the level of engagement and the expectation customers have got around ease of access, simplicity, great customer experience, um, means that actually that's, that's core to us in terms of the future. It's about putting the bank in the customer's hands, and that's kind of core to our strategy. I think um, in terms of what we've seen in terms of uh, Windows and the App Store, we've had, um, uh, I think, beyond our expectations in terms of um, uptake. So we've seen significant uptake. Um, as I said, the reason we developed it was because um, effectively we, we asked our customers uh, for a program called Design For You what they wanted, and within three months we'd had about 50, 60,000 requests for, fe um, for features and, and development. And the, and the leading one actually was, why can't we have mobile banking on Windows? Um, and so we responded to that and built the Windows app working with Microsoft. Um, why it gets good ratings? I think actually it comes down to leveraging the native um, features and really playing to the native strengths of the application and being genuine to the platform and actually making sure you actually deliver a great experience. I know it sounds quite um, cliche, but I think it's really critical in terms of what we're seeing. Um, and that's why we're, we're proud of having a five-star app because I think it's, uh, it's something that we want to kind of protect in terms of the experience we're delivering. Yeah. No, I think it's a powerful way to, you know, to engage with your customers and it's your brand and all those different things at play. And to, to have an app like that and those ratings is impressive. I know you've got another app that you're getting ready to bring to market uh, in the next month or so. Can you tell everyone a little bit about Pingit business-wise and then how you're going to support that with the app? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, approximately two years ago, we, we started with um, uh, looking at mobile and looking at mobile payments. And we wanted to start to really simplify how we can make payments simple for customers. We wanted to make it as simple as texting. Um, and we built the application Pingit, um, initially available across um, Apple and, and Android. Um, We've seen significant growth in the use of that platform, not only from a person-to-person -person perspective, so the ability to send money between individuals, but also businesses and consumer um, and, and large corporations. Um, and that the use cases have been um, growing at a, a massive rate in terms of adoption in there. So since we launched, we've had about 2.8 million downloads, uh, 500 million pounds of payments sent through the system. So and that's kind of growing at a, I think a rate of 230% a year. So significant growth. And obviously with the industry development of PayM and, and putting in the mobile payment rails for the industry, we're going to see that sort of take off um, leaps and bounds. Um, we're bringing that, based on our experience with mobile banking, we're bringing that onto uh, Windows. We're, we're due to launch at the end of this month. Um, and that will 
um, basically replicate the same features that we've got on the other platforms. And we're excited to actually bring that into market and, and close off our kind of our device journey, really, I suppose, in terms of being available across all, all platforms. Oh, thanks, Darren. I think really, really looking forward to the Ping It app coming out. I'd like to see another five-star rated app in the store. Um, but while, while I've got you on the seat there, um, and this will be the last question for everyone on the panel, just kind of stepping back, big picture, how do you think mobility is transforming your business? So what do you, what do you think the biggest impacts are at Barclays? So I think, I think I alluded it to it before. I think um, consumers are increasingly expecting you to have a mobile offering if you take banking generally. Um, the convenience around being able to access my account, see my balance, make payments at a very base level is, is huge. And I, I said before, the, the level of engagement we're going through that channel is significant. But I think increasingly it's about how can we take all of the other services that basically um, people use in terms of their engagement with us as an institution and actually translate those into great experiences available on the mobile phone. You know, whether that's being able to apply for a loan there and then on your phone to make a purchase or whether it's being able to notify a customer instantly that actually if they need to move some money between accounts to avoid any charges or fees. I think there's a load of um, services and propositions we can bring that actually really add value to customers' lives. And I think we're seeing a massive journey, not only within um, Barclays, but within the industry as a whole in terms of really driving on mobile and mobile access to services. And I think um, that's just going to grow and be you know, exponential in terms of its growth moving forward. Yeah, and those powerful examples and, and directly impacting your business, the way it's connecting with customers and changing the way they engage. So Jason, from the, the partner point of view, what, what are the big impacts you're seeing from mobility? <clears throat> for us, I think it's, it, for, and, and our customers, it's choice and the ability for them to get the information that they require on their terms. So, you know, if someone wants to get access to a report or some information or document via their phone because they're lying in bed because they want a, a, an early insight of what's going on within their business, that, that's just, that should, that should just fine. If they then want to move to a, a, a bigger screen real estate device because they want to start to, to, to work on that document and interact with it more, more, uh, more and then maybe they, that there's a problem with a particular area of the business that's outside of tolerance, outside of their, their, their core KPIs. They may want to then um, send a message to that person uh, in the business that's so expert in that area to start to do some, some, some root cause analysis on, on what's going on in their business. So I think it's about having the choice to consume the information on whichever device suits the, the role of the, biz, of the business person in the environment they're currently wanting to work. Yeah, no, good, good, good insights there. And, and Paul, how's, how's mobility going to change, Rico? What do you think the big, the big impacts will be there? Um, I, think, uh, I think I've probably reiterated before, I think as people start to uh, take uh, devices that, that we obviously take to market and actually take content and consume it differently, uh, they're going to do it, they're on, the, we're on the move. And the fact that they're on the move, then they need a, a secure device. And you know, it's a logical extension um, for us to align ourselves behind what we already do. And so, you know, simplistically, if someone has an idea, they can put it into a document and they typically would consume that document in a number of ways. So, you know, it's just a natural thing for us to do. The, the, the journey we have to get onto, though, is make sure that that device is appropriate for the, for the consumer who consumes what we do and what they do as a business. And, you know, the, the, the characteristic and the persona, which I mentioned before, is so key um, that, you know, I think Microsoft actually is so far ahead of that, that, that uh, concept that anyone else in the fact that they already have their technology mapping to personas of workers whether it's 365 or, or, or Yammer or Windows 8 phone or whatever it might be, and um, we're just hooking onto that. So we're just jumping onto Microsoft's coattails and following that persona journey because we think it fits very well with our core value proposition. Good. Yeah, I think a lot of good examples there. And, and Ian, how, how is this going to impact policing in the future? I mean, it's, you gave some great examples earlier. I think initially it is, as Paul just said, about for us the whole journey has been about the secure, robust platform that it is and what it exists on and that, that whole use of the, the common user experience is big for us. Um, but from a mobility sense it will be more and more about how we become more agile as an organisation. Clearly we have to think diff differently. Austerity is hitting hard um, you know, through, through government so it's absolutely upon us to, to be able to think about how we work more efficiently. We're finally becoming agile as an organisation, you know, even to a sense of we're actually closing some police stations during the day, not physically to the public, but we're saying our cops can't go back. You know, you have full access to all your solutions. You can be out, you can be visible to the public, you can be in Costa, you can be wherever you like. Um, you, have, you have that full remit to work in, a, in an agile mobile fashion. And 
And the more and more that we make our, inter our information more interactive, certainly through our partners, you know, we look more and more at the NHS, we look more and more at government in the way that that information becomes accessible, the more powerful it becomes. And, you know, and the final step for us is about how we become more interactive with the public. Um, and certainly from a mobile sense, we want the public to have the ability to log their crime online, to have the ability to pay fines, to you know, firearms licensing, any of those searches, any of that, those briefs that they can get from an interactive sense via mobile is absolutely the way that we need to begin. You know, there is a, we're going to achieve the ambitious point of beginning to try and channel shift police. Um, you know, people clearly like to pick up the phone and dial 101 and dial 999. How do we stop some of that from happening? How do we come, you know, how do we make them as information rich as we are? Yeah, no, I think great examples there. Peter. Okay, so I think probably for us when I think about it, you know, we've done mobile for a long time and we've probably got, I don't know, 40, 45,000 people on mobile devices. Um, and I expect like most of us in the room, historically a lot of that's been about mobile email, right? And mobile email was great and, you know, it lets us, you know, it lets us do lots of things and, and stay in contact more of the time. But, but the thing I see changing a lot now is more and more of what our people do, they can do on mobile devices. Um, and that starts to make quite a difference because, um, you know, the way I think of it is IT getting out of the way of people getting on and getting their jobs done, right? So, you know, less and less people, you know, the, the thing they could do before on a mobile might be part of the journey of what they needed to get done, and now they can start to complete that journey. So the whole thing can get done. So rather than needing to go back to their PC or, you know, phoning someone or, to, or doing something to, you know, complete the journey in a different way, uh, we can complete it on the device. Um, you know, on a mobile device. And I, and I think the other thing is it starts to, the, the apps start to unlock things that we'd, we'd just never been able to do before. So um, I'll give you one example, which is with our, uh, some of our engineering community. Um, they have to go out, they're, you know, they're out in, I don't know, maybe they're out in a shopping centre and they have to find a piece of our equipment that's in the shopping centre um, in order to do a piece of work. And it might take the, the engineer half an hour to find it because we'll have a description of where it is but they have trouble finding it in the shopping centre. What they can do now with the mobile device, the mobile device is GPS enabled, that's great, right, so they can get near to it. But then if they have trouble finding it, what the engineers can now do is they can take a picture of where it is, they can put a little note in, they submit that on the app the next time the next engineer comes along to that, they can see the photo, they can see the guidance. And so all of a sudden we're, we're unlocking in people, you know, the ability to share in a way that we've just never been able to do before. And, you know, they've been able to take pictures, GPS, the ability to, in the moment, just go, oh, I'll share that and I'll share that back in because it's not expensive for me. It takes me 10 seconds and, you know, I'm done. Um, I think it can make a real difference to all sorts of things that we do. No, I think great examples and in, in all across the different businesses represented. I think you see how mobility is really impacting uh, the business, how it's the, the depth of the ecosystem and the platform that really matters. So I do want to say thank you to the panel. Really appreciate you coming up, sharing your insights. I'd appreciate if the audience could uh, recognize that. And that brings us to the end of the day. So I want to say thank you all very much for your time. I know you're all busy. I know taking a morning out of the day is a big commitment. We do have a, a survey that was on your chair or under your chair. I would appreciate it if you could take the time to fill that out. Like I said, we value your time. We want to get your feedback. We want to make sure these are events are as good as they can be. Just to encourage you a little bit, there are five Lumia 630s. Chris talked about this device, but there are five of those that we'll give out randomly at 1230. So as we break, we have lunch provided. We have some of our partners showcasing some things. Your Microsoft account teams will also be out there if you have any questions or want to follow up. But please take time to have lunch, connect with each other, grab me if you need anything else. And thanks again for coming in and spending half a day with Microsoft. <laughs>